once upon a time, in a mythical place called Cape Kennedy, an astronaut named Tony Nelson went up on a space mission. The missile went up, but something went wrong, and they had to bring it down. Captain Nelson landed on an island in the South Pacific, where he found a bottle. At least it looked like a bottle, but it didn't act like a bottle. Because in it was a genie. Oh, not your average everyday genie, but a beautiful genie who could grant any wish. Captain Nelson was so grateful, he set Jeannie free. Only she didn't want to be free. You know how it is when you've been cooped up in a bottle for 2,000 years. She wanted to have fun. And she wanted to have it with Captain Nelson. So she followed him back to Cocoa Beach, a mythical town in a mythical state called Florida. And there in this house, the girl in the bottle plays Spin the Astronaut. A meeting is expected to be called at Geneva next month. Turning to the domestic front, at Cape Kennedy, America's three-man astronaut team is preparing to take an historic walk into outer space. The team consists of Captain Tony Nelson, Captain Roger Healy, and Lieutenant George Conway. It's probable that Captain Nelson, as head of the team, will be the first American to step into outer space. I'll have local news for... Hello, Nelson here. Captain Nelson. Dr. Bellows here. Oh, hello, Dr. Bellows. I've just been going over some of your reports. Uh, how are you feeling? Oh, fine, sir. Isn't that what the reports say? Oh, the reports look fine. But in my opinion, you've been a bit jumpy lately. Well, me, sir? Not at all. Uh, I sleep soundly. Uh, appetite's good. I could eat a horse. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Shoo, shoo. Did you say shoe? Yeah, oh, I, I'm sorry. I wasn't. I wasn't speaking to you, sir. <laughs> Jeannie, Jeannie, would you, would you get this horse out of here, Captain? Uh, uh, Captain. Uh, Captain. Do you have a horse in your living room? <laughs> of course not, sir. Oh, what would I be doing with a horse in my living room? I don't know. But we'll find out this afternoon. I want you to report here at two o'clock for some tests. Yeah, but. but... Jeannie, would you get this horse out of here? Oh, but you said you could eat a horse. That's merely an expression. Now, come on, take him away. <laughs> Thanks. Anything you desire. Oh, just don't get carried away. Oh, you have not seen anything yet, Master. <laughs> are the best plover eggs I've ever tasted. <laughs> and of course, they're the only plover eggs I've ever tasted. Mm. Have some more sausage, Master. Mm. Well, I don't know, Jeannie. I don't think I'd better. Steak? Well? Veal, kidney, pork chops? <laughs> Jeannie, I'm, this is more than I've ever had for breakfast. Oh, wait until you see the lunch I have planned for you, Master. Oh, and that's Roger and George. Do you mind? <clears throat> Thanks. George, come here, Look, I've got my charts upstairs. I think we'd better go and take another look at it, huh? Good. Look, you guys start without me. I'm gonna grab a cup of coffee. <laughs> when you step out of that spaceship, remember, easy does it. You push yourself away too hard and you'll never stop spinning. You know, as I see it, our two tricky moments come when we open the hatch to let you out and then when we uh, close it again on your re-entry. I'll start the decompression. When the airlock is pressurized to airspace, I open the door and out you go. Watch out for that first step, Tony. 
It's really a honey. Uh, listen, Roger, I think it's very important that you take a look at this, too. <laughs> you know, there's only one thing that worries me. Huh? Yeah, when I step out into space, Roger pilot the ship. <laughs> yeah, you know, it might be a good idea if we check that tether again. Yeah, uh, well, I, I can't do it right now. I have something else to do. More important than checking your space umbilical cord? Yeah, well, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Well, anything you say. Guess we better be running along. You are not going. Listen here, young lady. You've got to stop playing around like that. I'm not going where? Walking around in space. Not without me. It is perfectly safe. Oh, except that your tether might break and, and you might go spinning off into nothing. What is a tether? Hmm? Uh, tether, it's, um, well, it's like a rope that keeps me attached to the space capsule. And Jeannie, I became an astronaut because that's what I want to do. And believe me, I know what I'm doing. Well, I will not have the in danger. Well, young lady, I'm afraid you don't have much to say about that. Uh, I'll have to get going. Where are you going? I'm going to take a few routine tests. Oh. And if you do not pass these tests? Well, somebody will be taking my place in that capsule. <laughs> but don't worry, I'll pass them. Thou art a stubborn and foolish man. game of chess, huh? Past all the tests I've already taken, I wouldn't be taking this uh, flight on Monday, would I? Captain, I'm going to be very honest with you. You baffle me. Oh, I admit that so far you've checked out 100%, but uh, there's something. Some little something that I'm not quite satisfied with. You don't know what that would be, do you, Captain? Oh, of course not. Never mind, I'll find it. Exactly what are you looking for, sir? Well, I really don't know. A horse in your living room? Something that you can see that I can't? Voices that only you can hear? Doesn't add up to the picture of an ideal astronaut, does it? You said I checked out 100%, sir. Well, we're going to check you out again. We, um, we just may find a, um, a physical clue to the problem. That is, if there is a problem. Yes, if there is a problem. Oh, uh, you can change behind that screen. Yes. Start you off at three and a half miles an hour. I can do this all day. Step down, please. <laughs> Something seems to be wrong with my instrument panel. I'll, uh, I'll check your heart with my stethoscope. <clears throat> Is 
everything all right? Is anything the matter? Uh, nothing. You have a funny look on your face. Well, I... How do you feel? Fine, fine. Mm, excuse me. Uh, let's try the pulmonary function tester. Now, let me just check this out. Fine. You try it, please. And the fresh mouthpiece. Now, just breathe normally. First, I'll make sure this is working properly. Yeah, what's next? Follow me, please. Excuse me. Uh, this is a space arm mobility tester. I've never seen one of these gadgets before. It's a test of coordination under pressure. Just slip your arm through the glove. I want to see how many of the small dials you can turn. <laughs> What's the matter? I, I, I don't know, sir. It tickles, that's all. <laughs> Just please turn the dials. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Very ticklish job. Take your arm out of the glove. All right. Come over here, please. <laughs> You say? Oh, nothing, sir. I have a feeling we weren't alone. You can be quite sure we are alone, Captain. Can I? Oh, of course, of course. Would you get into these, please? Yes, sir. Will you get on the agometer, please? Yes, sir. Now, I want you to start slowly and then gradually increase the speed. The pedals are weighted. You won't be able to go very fast. Ready? Go. I haven't done this since I was a kid. <laughs> Save your breath, Captain Nelson. Hey, stop! Captain Nelson, you're going too fast. You're telling me! Stop it! I can't! That's incredible. Do you realize what a strain that is on the heart? Yes, sir, I do. Stand up, please. Captain, will you get dressed, please? Am I through? I would say so. I, I mean, am I all right? The results are beyond my wildest expectations. <laughs> oh, sir, you're going to let me go up in that capsule on Monday, aren't you? Captain, you don't need a capsule. <laughs> I know you're here someplace. All right, now, come on out. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> All right, young lady, come on out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, 
enjoyed playing those children's games. Oh, did you? Well, you know what you've done to me? You might have washed me out. Ooh, that means you will not be allowed to go walking around in space, hmm? I'll be lucky if I'm allowed to walk around in public. <laughs> How could you have done this to me? I, I did it for you. I must protect you from danger. And you've protected me right out of my life's work. Oh! All right, if you like this coat so much, keep it. This is Dr. Bellows. I have to see you immediately. I want you to be in my office in five minutes, if not sooner. That's an order. I can use it. I feel a little woozy. Well, this will fix you up, Doctor. Huh. Fine. Enjoy it. Thanks, Walter. There's something wrong with the sandwich. Every time I take a bite, it's holy again. Look. Would you like a doctor, doctor? <laughs> of course not. I've just been overworking. Maybe you better go home now, sir. Yes. That might be a good idea, Walter. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, good night, Walter. Good night, sir.
I'm too young to go. phoned me and told me to rush right over. I did not. Oh, did I? I really don't know. You don't know whether or not you phoned me? Well, of course I did. Well, Captain, I'm a sick man. I think my heart just stopped. Your heart just stopped? Yes. I think I'll rush right over to the base hospital and turn myself in for observation. Uh, well, what about my uh, fitness report, sir? Oh, Captain, in my condition, who am I to presume to judge anyone? <laughs> <laughs> I think you are back in the space program. I think so, too. <laughs> and thanks. But no more tricks. Oh, no, Master. All right. Let's go home. Oh, you're taking me back? Temporarily. <laughs> but no more shenanigans, either. Oh, no, I, I promise. All right. My car's... My car's out front. Say, would you, uh, mind? You know, you know. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> No, no, come on, come on, cut it out, will you? Come on. No, come on, stop. Now, what, are, what are people going to say? You have perfect trajectory, Tony. Glad to hear it. We're on auxiliary temp. Everything is green here. Tony, are you ready to hit the deck? As ready as I'll ever be. Decompression switch on. is open. I am stepping out. I'm ready for the wild blue yonder. Check your tether line. Tether line clear. Easy does it, Tony. Tony's out of the ship. All systems normal. I've left the ship. I'm floating. Are you kidding? It feels great. I might wish this wish comes true tonight.
Master, would you like some more coffee? Mm. Master, is that newspaper more entertaining than I am? No, don't be silly, Jeannie. Well, you hide behind it and never even notice me. I do not know why you bothered rescuing me from that bottle on the island. For all you care, I could be a lamp or a vase or a... Of course I notice you. As a matter of fact, I noticed you were wearing a new shade of lipstick this morning. It's very becoming. You look beautiful. Hey, I gotta get moving. I'm gonna be in the centrifuge earlier this morning. Have a good day. You were a chimpanzee. It's something you order in and out of a bottle. Oh, no, that's not true. You're a warm, wonderful woman. You're everything a man could possibly... Back in the bottle. Ah! No, no, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean it exactly that way. Jeannie, now, now, come on. Uh, look, I... <laughs> Do me a favor, don't ever translate that. <laughs> Diane! Tony Bunny! Oh, Tony Bunny? <laughs> it must have been two years. Two years, one month, and ten days, Tony Bunny. <laughs> oh, it been that long. When did you get in the town? Why, just ten minutes ago. I borrowed Papa's plane and flew in. Really ready to fly. <laughs> well, yes. Say, we uh, we really kicked it around in Fort Worth, didn't we? Oh, well, it's a it's a nice city, all right. We didn't uh, I wouldn't say we didn't exactly kicked it around. Sure, I remember Fort Worth. We had a wonderful time, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Those lovely warm days and nights. <laughs> <laughs> well, sit down, Doc. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Honey, you're nervous. Say, you're not married to anything silly like that, are you? Oh, no, no, nothing silly like that. I've got to get that chair fixed. I don't want that to happen again. Diane, how long are you going to be in town? In just a couple of days. I've got to liquidate some stock holdings for Papa. Then I guess we won't have too much time together. We don't need too much time, do we, Lava? Was it you used to say that we could crowd a whole hour to just a couple of seconds? Oh, really? Did I, did I say that? <clears throat> you know, this is wonderful for relaxation once you get the hang of it. You sure act married. Well, I'm not. I have every right to live my own life. How about eight o'clock? Seven. All right. Tell you what, why don't you meet me here for cocktail? It'll be Fort Worth all over again. And maybe we'll throw in a little Dallas and Houston, too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, Tony Bunn. I'm sorry, Diane. I'm sorry. I really am. Uh, 7 o'clock, then? 6.30. Jeannie? Jeannie, where are you? Jeannie? 
I'm here, Master. Just what do you think you were doing? Well, I have a right to protect what is yours. Y what's that? Me. <laughs> Jeannie, it just so happens that I'm a very good friend of her family. Her, her brothers and I were best buddies when I was stationed down in Texas. Diane was just one of the boys. She does not look like one of the boys. <laughs> well, you're just going to have to accept that, that I'm doing this for her family. It's kind of a good deed. I'll see you later. Goodbye. section making out the results of the pressure chamber tests now. What did you mean you were doing it for her family? Jeannie, what are you doing here? Well, I would like to know more about this girl. There'll be four reports. Fennedy Davis Henderson. <laughs> and the girl in the heroin costume. Uh, nothing, General. I'll have the reports on your desk this afternoon. Goodbye, sir. These are ready for your signature, sir. What? Oh, yes. Never mind about Diane. What if somebody catches you in that outfit? I couldn't explain you in a million years. Then you are going out with this girl tonight. You bet I am. I don't want to discuss it anymore. a pillar of salt. You do, and I'll pour ink in your bottle. <gasps> oh, shh, shh. Smoke yourself home, will you? <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Well, I have seen some stupid driving in my time, but I've never seen such a beautiful girl in my life. Oh, I'm so sorry. I must have ruined your car. Oh, it was, it was nothing. I'll, I'll get another one. But you've broken the eye that shines in front. I'll say, how about dinner tonight? Oh, I could not have dinner with you, but I feel I should do something about your car. Well, do something about me. How about dinner tonight? <laughs> you are very persistent. Also very lovable. How about dinner tonight? I do not know anything about you. What is there to know? I'm an emotionally healthy astronaut. An astronaut? Of course. You're a friend of... A friend of whose? Never mind. I will have dinner with you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> a rather traumatic little experience, which you may be able to clarify for me. Me, sir? Yes, you. When you drove up this morning, you were alone. But when I looked again, there was a girl with you. A girl? Yes. A girl in a harem costume. A girl in a harem costume? Well, at least I thought she was in a harem costume. And then I looked a second time, and she was in a dress. <laughs> Doctor, you have a problem. Yes. 
Of course, I know there was no girl. That was my subconscious playing tricks. But a harem costume. <laughs> I'll have to work this out. Naturally, this will remain strictly between us. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> and a big, beautiful good morning to you, Colonel. Is it? <laughs> Oh, man, did I just meet a girl. I know, and you're in love again. Oh, no, no, I'm serious this time. This girl is different. She's she's sensitive, and she's shy, and I don't know how to handle her. Maybe, look, maybe you can give me some advice, huh? Well, sure, sure. Well, for one thing, with a shy girl, you've got to have a positive approach. Uh, uh, you have to have a battle plan. What uh, would you suggest? Um, let's see. A, a. the uh, softening up process, a liberal amount of champagne. And B, the pincer movement, uh, get her up to your apartment to listen to your records. And C, the... All out of tack. No, no, wrong. <laughs> With the kind of girl you described, that would ruin everything. Now, you've got to draw her out. Um, get her talking about herself. Get simpatico. And then we'll... And then she falls into my lap like a ripe plum. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got a date tonight. I'd like to meet this girl. What do you say we meet for cocktails? I'll give you ten minutes with her, no more. Now, what does that mean? Uh, anyone who can give expert advice like that can't be trusted. <laughs> Jeannie? Jeannie? Yes, Master? Oh, I'm gonna be uh, leaving now. There's supposed to be a good late show on television, and I was... Hey, wow. What you all dressed up for? I have a date. With a man? They make the best date. <laughs> well, uh, well, who is he? Where, where'd you meet him? Oh, I did not meet him. I bumped into him. And uh, just like that, you made a date with him, a man you don't know anything about? Oh, if you are jealous and do not wish me to go. No, 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 go. Uh, you, you have every right to go out. Uh, you have a wonderful time. What's his name? I forgot to ask him. You're going out with a man and you don't even know his name? Well, Master, I'm a grown woman. What is there to worry about? Grown men? I see you don't have any experience with the American male. I have to have a little talk with him when he comes to pick you up. I am meeting him at the public library. He's not coming here. What's he trying to hide? Well, if you would rather I do not go, I will not go, sir. <laughs> no, no, go, go. It's your life. You made the date. Go. Oh. Well, goodbye, then. Bye. I am going. Yeah, I know. Good night, then. Good night. Unless you would rather I do not go, and then I won't. No, go, go. She went. <laughs> Hi, hello? Oh, hello, Roger. Listen, I haven't got time to talk. I, I've got to go after a friend of mine. Listen, I thought we were going to meet and have a couple of drinks, and... Uh, no, I'll, I'll just have to meet her some other time. My friends are in real trouble. <laughs> Never mind, she just came back. Hello, lover. Ready to rock the town? Huh? Well, now, I bet you got big plans for tonight. Where do we go first? Public library. Uh, no, thanks. We're just looking. Tony, I think you've been in orbit too long. Well, first, you dragged me to the public library, and you don't even take out a book. And this is the fourth nightclub we've been to. Uh, don't you like our nightclubs, Diane? I wouldn't know. We haven't stopped in one long enough to have a drink. There's a friend of mine. I'd like you to meet him. Well, that's progress. So far, all I met a four doorman and a head librarian. <laughs> uh, Raj? Hi. Tony! Uh, this is Diane Rodney, Captain Roger Healy. Diane, e, would you like to join us? Uh, no, thanks. Not... We've got to be running along. Did you ever sit down long enough to make a friend? <laughs> uh, Diane, sit down. I'll be right back. Part genie. Master, darling, what are you doing here? Oh, I, uh, I just dropped in for a drink. While I'm here, I might as well drive you home. Oh, I do not think my date would like that. Yeah, I don't care whether he likes it or not. 
Jeannie, I don't think you realize the trouble you can get into staying out late with a man you don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, this man could be uh, dangerous. He could be some kind of a nut. He could be Roger. Roger, 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 you're dead. Don't you know each other? Yeah, yes, yes, we've met. Oh, oh, uh, Diane, this is Jeannie. Oh, any friend of Tony Bunny's is a friend of mine. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is the girl you were telling me about, huh? This is the one. Huh? Gorgeous, isn't she? Sugar? Isn't she something else? Yes, yeah, she sure is. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The coffee may be too hot. It is just right. <laughs> don't, don't wake me up. I am sure that you would notice if you were eating breakfast with a chimpanzee. Not if he was reading a newspaper. The thing that I like about this conversation is that I don't know what anybody's talking about. What she's trying to say is she adores me. You know, she's been doing things like this for me all night. You know, when I sat down, I was sitting a draft, and she sat there herself. Where did you say that you found her? Uh, Diane, would you like to dance? Oh, I thought you never asked. Rod, will you dance with her, please? <laughs> Oh, sure. Oh, wait. Uh, your shoes. <laughs> kind of hard to believe, but when I came in, she took off my shoes so I'd be comfortable. <laughs> yeah, hard to believe there. You sit down there, add a little champagne, you drink up there bubbly bubbly, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Jeannie, what are you trying to prove? You said to go, so I went. But not with my best friend. Ah, oh, you are jealous. Oh, of course I'm not jealous. I, I just don't like to see you make a fool of yourself, that's all. I mean, taking his shoes off, putting his shoes on. Will I do that for you? I, well, yeah, that's different. Now, stop gulping down the chin and come home. Are you asking me as my master or as a jealous tone, me? Neither. Then I will not go home. <laughs> but... <laughs> the next dance is yours, reluctant dragon. Oh, well, I don't think we ought to leave them alone. Give me one good reason. Uh, you two go ahead. We're going to be running along. Running along where? The old battle plan? What old battle plan? Captain Healy invited me to listen to his record collection. <laughs> We're going to have a nice long talk, Sympatico. How about that? Yeah, I want to have a nice long talk with I'm you, Roger. Not in the middle of a battle. Look, I'll take care of the bill. Nice meeting you, Diane. Now, wait a minute, Roger. Don't worry, Master. I will report to you everything that happens. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, Jeannie. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to Casa Healy. <laughs> ah, the house of beautiful music, fine wines, and a lonely bachelor until tonight. Oh, it is very lovely. I, ooh. Uh, is uh, something the matter? Oh, it is my head. I, I think I've had too much champagne. Ah, uh, you've come to the right place. Old Doc Healy has just the cure for headaches. Oh, you are a doctor? Uh huh. We have a nice, comfortable sofa and no glaring lights. That's uh, very important. Excuse me. No glaring lights. <laughs> Lots of lights off. And what do we have here? <sighs> Soft music. <laughs> now, how's that? It is very nice. Just leave it up to the old Doc. <sighs> Be a short. <laughs> Little lights. Get that right away. <laughs> no way. Pardon me. There we go. Now, back to that nasty old headache. Put your shoulder right over there. Relax. Close your eyes. Just feel the mood of the music. I don't even have the record in my collection. <laughs> I think my headache is gone. Now I've got one. Well, <clears throat> here's your chance to, to help me. Just as I was going to help you. <sighs> Right. 
Roger. Roger. Roger, open up. Raj. Good morning, Raj. Tony, what, what, what are you doing here? I want to borrow your slide rule. A slide rule at 2 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, yeah, I got a little work I want to finish. You want, want to borrow my slide rule at 2 o'clock in the morning? Boy, what, a, what a crazy night this has been. First, Jeannie runs out on me, and then... Jeannie runs out on you? Yeah, I didn't get the plan C. Oh. Oh, well, I, I'm sorry about that, Raj. Better luck next time. What next time? I don't even know where she lives. What? Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Do you know where she lives? Oh, sorry. Well, I gotta find her. I'm crazy about her. Did she ever give you her phone number or anything? No, uh... Now, well, come to think of it, she may have. Uh, uh, the party where I met her, she was handing it out to everybody. Her phone number? Oh, you can't blame her. A plain girl like that, uh, she has to do everything she can to get a date. Plain girl? You must have retarded redness. She was gorgeous. Well, if she was so gorgeous, how could you get a date with her just like that? Well, I'm pretty gorgeous myself. You see what she did for me? She couldn't do enough for me. Treated me like I was a king. Well, a guy gets pretty tired of a woman phoning all over him. Well, what's wrong with a little attention? Attention? You're talking about a, a girl who feels your coffee cup on your first date. That's bad. <laughs> well, the day it's your coffee cup, tomorrow it's your whole life. Yeah. See how she would get to be a little possessive. Mm. Not only that, you're going to lose all your married friends. Uh, all, all my married friends? Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the wives will hate Jeannie. Oh, they'll see her catering to you, uh, uh, treating you with uh, a kindness and understanding, compassion. You think they're going to sit idly by and let her destroy everything they stand for? I see I can lose the wives. I'm sure right about that. Now, maybe she did go a little too far when she took off my shoes. Roger, the last thing I want to do is talk you out of a girl you're crazy about. If she was so great, how come I was able to get a date with her just like that? Well, I don't want to spoil anything for you. There's nothing to spoil. She overstepped herself when she tipped a doorman and helped me into the cab. Our friendship's the only thing that counts. Yeah. I don't know how to thank you, Tony. If you hadn't talked to me, I made a, made a terrible fool out of myself. Take it easy, Ross. Uh, uh, Tony, you, you, uh, you forgot your uh, slide rule. Uh, what, at 2 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> You'll still be out with Captain Healy. Oh, I left him. You were not worried about me? Hmm? No, no, not a bit. I said to myself, if Jeannie can't take care of herself, who can? Well, I, I thought you might at least go up to Captain Healy's apartment to see if I was all right. No, 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 it never occurred to me. Well, that'd be at 2.30 in the morning. Oh, Jeannie, do you mind? <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> Roger, what are you doing here? Oh, I couldn't sleep, Tony. I figured if you needed a slide rule at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, you must be working on something pretty important, so I brought it over. Come on, thanks. You really don't have to bother. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Oh, Master, you did go to Captain Healy's apartment. Well, only for a minute. Oh, you were worried about me. A little bit. Jeannie, there's one thing you've got to remember. What is that? human. <laughs> 